Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our talk on DETECT. And DETECT stands uh, for DETECT Tactics, Techniques and combat, combat Threats. And it's a framework to help blue teams map their capabilities to Mitra Tech. My name is Ruben Bouwman. I'm from the Netherlands and I have my own company, uh, also located in the Netherlands. It's called Serious Security. And I have my roots in development, software development for enterprise and uh, organizations. And I have nine years experience in information security. And I'm currently employed at Rabobank, a quite a large bank in, bank in the Netherlands. And um, my job there is uh, within the threat hunting team. And I'm one of the developers of the Detect framework, which we'll show you uh, today. Um, I'm Marx Bakker. I'm also a freelance cyber defense expert. Um, currently also doing a lot of work for Rayobank. Um, I'm the co-developer of the Detect framework and also have been working very closely on the Tahiti threat hunting methodology. Um, so I want to start off with a question that we asked ourselves as hunters, where to start hunting? Um, and in trying to solve this, we looked at the MITRE tech framework. And while answering this question, we also asked ourselves some other questions. How good is our visibility? How good are we able to spot traces of attack techniques within our data sources? And a data source is, for example, your web proxy logs, or the data you have on the things that happen on your laptops or your servers. And visibility can be used within threat hunting to find those traces of attack techniques. Uh, can also be used with an instant response. But it's something different, at least within the detect framework, than detection coverage. So both are different things within the framework, but visibility can be used to build new detections and thereby create new use cases for the SecOps team. Uh, within the DTEC framework will also take care of uh, taking note on how good are we uh, regarding detecting certain attack techniques by scoring how good our detections are. Um, and last but not least, the other question we had, um, how, um, which attack techniques, which threat actor behaviors are the most important for us as a company? So which TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures are being used by attackers against companies and are there also to interest of us? And with a detect frame, we combine all of those things together to be able to answer the question where to start hunting. And of course, detect can also be used for loads of other blue teaming activities. So it's not only being created for threat hunting, but for us, this was the reason why we created the framework. Um, and one last thing I think is good to mention that this talk, if we're talking about threat hunting and when we are talking about detect, then we are in particular talking on one very specific type of threat hunting, which is the type of threat hunting which focuses on DTPs, threat actor behaviors, um, and then based on threat intelligence to see which TTPs are the most important to, be, to build new detections for or to build new preventive controls. This will become all much more clear in the next slides where we we'll go into all of these concepts that are on this slide uh, in the, by Ruben and by me. So before we go into detect, I want to make sure that everybody here at least has an idea what MITRE TAC is. Um, probably many of you already know MITRE TAC, but I want to make sure that everybody is able to follow the whole talk. So one of the ways I often explain MITRE attack is by calling it the Wikipedia on cyber attacks, because MITRE attack does contain loads of information on how attackers operate. So what, do, what is, does an attacker do to compromise a company? And which attack techniques is it employing during the attack to achieve its end goal? And all that kind of information is within MITRE attack. Um, and we, we put MITRE attack next to the pyramid of pain, then MITRE attack is telling us a lot about the TTPs of threat actors, so the tactics, techniques, and procedures they use. And MITRE attack also has some information on the attack tools that adversaries use against uh, companies. 
Another nice way to explain and visualize the attack uh, framework is by putting all techniques within a big matrix. So obviously we call this the attack matrix. So every white square you see um, on the screen is a particular attack technique. And those, those have all been divided into several tactics. So all the way on the left, you have the tactic initial access, which contains a technique like uh, sending a spear phishing mail with a malicious attachment and using that to compromise the company. And all the way on the left, you have tactics which are more used at the end stage of an attack or during the attack. Like when you are dealing with a threat actor that wants to steal your intellectual property, the MITRE tech is also describing several techniques to exfiltrate data. Yeah, so let's talk about DETECT. Uh, DETECT is a framework, and it's both a framework in a, in a way that it's a Python tool, but it's also a framework in a way that it's um, a, theory, a theory about it. And the framework uh, helps blue teams to administrate, score, and compare four topics. So it's the data source quality, your visibility coverage, detection coverage, and threat actor behaviors. And it's all about where to focus on within, for example, your threat hunting investigations. Where can we improve our visibility to make proper detection? And where do we start our threat hunting investigations? And as I said, it's also a theory because we put a lot of time in creating scoring tables and explaining how you can score your detection coverage, for example. A lot of things you need to configure within Detect to administrate uh, is done in YAML files. And YAML files is easy, it's human readable uh, compared to, for example, JSON or XML. This tool uh, we created um, at Rabobank. Uh, so we put uh, the code open source to, uh, to the community so that other banks, other companies can make use of this framework. And so you can find it on the GitHub page of the Rabobank CDC, which stands for Cyber Defense Center. Before I continue, I have to make a, a disclaimer because we are going to show you a lot of data and visualizations. Um, um, I have to make clear that it's all about sample data. So it's not Rabobank related, it's not related to any other company, it's sample data. So the first thing you can do with Detect is um, getting to know what your data sources are. If you go to the MitraTech website, then you can uh, look up, for example, the process injection technique. As you see on the screen, it's T1055, and that's one example of the techniques being listed in the MitraTech matrix. And for that specific technique, process injection, there's a list of data sources. And that means that um, you can find traces of this technique within that data sources. For example, the API monitoring, the Windows registry, file monitoring, etc. If you look at all the data sources that are listed on the MitraTech website, then you'll get a list of 50 data sources. And within Detect, you can administrate for that 50 data sources whether or not you have that data source available in your organization. And the next step is that you can score the quality of the data in that data source, because having a data source is one, but it's also good to know what the quality is of the data that is available in that data source. And we defined five data quality dimensions. And we, then we talk about device completeness, field completeness, timeliness, consistency, and retention. And you can score your data source, the quality of the data source based on those dimensions. And they're all explained in the framework on the wiki pages of the GitHub. Um, the beautiful thing you can do with Detect is once you have administrated your data sources, and you know what data sources you have, then Detect will map it back to MitraTech. And then you can create the overview, as you can see on the screen, that you will get a rough overview on uh, your potential visibility for these techniques based on the data sources you have. And the darker the color, for example, the, the most dark color means that you have uh, uh, all or almost all data sources available for that specific technique. The next step you can do with Detect is manually score your visibility. 
As said, the previous uh, overview was a rough overview of your potential visibility based on the number of data sources. Uh, but sometimes it's necessary or um, sometimes it's necessary to know more exact what your visibility uh, is. For example, if you look at WMI, that's Windows Management Instrumentation, and it's one of the techniques being listed in MitraTech. And if you look at the data sources of WMI, where you can find traces, then there are four data sources mentioned for WMI. But if you have only one, for example, the authentication logs, then it's not enough to have visibility or to build detection on WMI. Um, and when manually scoring your visibility, you can adjust the score uh, based on uh, your experience with, uh, for example, WMI. Um, you can also choose if you have administrated your visibility, and you can do it automatically by taking the rough visibility and generate the visibility scores automatically, and you can adjust them manually. Um, but based on your experiences during your hunting investigations, but also during your experience on uh, monitoring use cases, you can adjust the visibility based on that experience. All of the administration for your visibility coverage, but also for the detection coverage, which I will tell you in the next slide, is all done in YAML files. And then uh, you, you have the possibility to create another layer, which looks very uh, similar to the previous one, but this one is more accurate, more exact, based on your um, experience. Uh, you can also export it to Excel. That also counts for the data sources from the previous slide to, create, to get a, a nice overview in Excel. The next thing you can do with Detect is getting an overview of all of your detections. But this is a manual exercise because we can do it automatically. Um, within your organization, you probably have an EDR tool running on a user endpoint. You probably have a, a network monitoring tool looking at the traffic, maybe some AI or some models uh, based on the traffic to trigger alerts. And you probably have a seam with a lot of use cases there. So within Detect, you can make an overview of all the things you have, all the use cases, all the models, uh, all the detections that are there, and you can score them, each of them. And we help, yeah, uh, we help you in scoring those um, detections by providing the scoring tables. And as you can see on the screen, there is um, minus zero, which means no detection at all. We have a score of zero, which means we have some logs, but we don't have detection for it, but it can be used for a uh, forensic purpose, for example. And then we have five levels of uh, uh, detection. So maybe your detection is basic or fair or good, or maybe it's excellent. You can all administrate that within the Detect framework. And then the next step is you can create an overview, as you can see on the screen. And that really helps you in getting to know what is your coverage based on the attack framework, uh, which helps you to see where do we have detection and how good is the detection. And it helps you to focus on improving your detection or to build new detection for the ones, for the techniques you don't have any detection for. Yeah, so the last piece of the puzzle is um, knowing which te techniques are uh, the most important in a sense that we see those being used the most often uh, by threat actors. And we can do this in several ways. Um, and one of the ways you can do this is by loading in all the attack data from the framework itself, from MITRE attack, because they already have a lot of information regarding how um, certain threat actor groups are operating. And this is actually exactly what you see on the slide. So we uh, loaded all the group information from the MITRE attack framework, uh, and we created a heat map for that. Um, the heat map shows you which attack techniques based on data in MITRE attack are being the most popular. So the darker the color red, the more that attack technique is being used based on the data of MITRE attack. Because what you also can do, and what I often do, um, is loading in my own threat intelligence. So maybe you have performed a red teaming exercise, or you get threat intelligence from your internal uh, threat intel team. You can put a threat intel within a group jumble file in which you list the attack techniques uh, and then use that to draw um, maps um, 
on the attack navigator from MitreTag. Or you can also load in multiple uh, threat actor groups uh, and creating heat maps based on your own threat intelligence. And what you also lately see that is that more, more and more security vendors are also starting to share uh, intelligence related to uh, MITRE attack. So they share statistics on which attack techniques they have seen the most in a certain time period. And this data is often um, based on incident response investigations they have performed. And also that kind of information can be loaded into uh, detect and thereby visualized within the attack navigator. And on the GitHub page of uh, the project, we also try to keep um, up to date with new reports being published and then creating group general files for that and also creating JSON layer files for the navigator. And then um, we have actually all the information that we want to have to st start doing gap analysis. Um, in this example, because you can also compare visibility, but in this example, we're comparing detection coverage with a certain threat actor. And what this picture shows you is that for every red square, um, we do not have detection, but it has been used by a certain threat actor. And in the green ones, we do have detection for, but that has not been used by this particular threat actor. Um, and then orange ones are also interesting, because these ones are the ones we do have detection for, and they have been used by threat actor. But those can still be interesting to, to have an additional look at, because it could very well be that your level of detection for um, credential dumping, you have scored that poor, like you gave the score one or two. And then this could still be a good candidate to look into to see if you can improve the level of detection that you have on that attack technique. And then something added pretty recently um, is the integration of the event query language from Endgame. This is um, an American EDR provider, and event query language is a language they have developed their own and they use within the EDR to build new detections. And the great thing is that they also share this back to the community as a set of open source uh, Python libraries. And now, Detect is also written in Python, so for us it was pretty easy to integrate it within the Detect framework. And it allows you to do several things. Um, you can use it, for example, to influence the way how data sources are used within Detect to um, draft a picture on your raw visibility coverage. But for this talk, we're going to give you an example how you can use this to um, ask Detect how your detection coverage was looking like at a certain time period. Because within the group jumble files, you can also keep um, a record of your history on maybe your detection level or certain attack technique was one at this moment of time, but now has improved on this date, and now you gave it a score of three. So we have a short uh, demo video of that. So we're now going to first ask the attack to write a query, um, and which you're going to use to create a um, JSON layer file. We load into the tech navigator that shows our detection coverage before the 1st of November 2017. So it puts out an uh, JSON file, and then we go to the uh, tech navigator from MitreTag. We load in the file, um, we sort it based on level of uh, detection, and this was the state of detection coverage at the first before the, at the 1st of November, 2017. And then we're going to ask Detect, okay, generate a layer file that shows the level of detection that we have at this moment in time. Now, as you can see, that already looks much better. So this is a very nice way in which you can officially show to others how you have been improving over a certain time period regarding your detection coverage. So this concludes our talk. Um, thanks for coming to our talk. Um, if you do have questions or want to talk to us, we will stay around a little longer, but we do have to leave, unfortunately, tonight back to the Netherlands. Um, and thanks, Heck Lou, for providing the possibility to present uh, on Detect.